Pop quiz, what are the chances of you hitting the lotto? Even with mega millions above $800 million today, it's a good reminder that it's only about one in 176 million. Outlook not so good. There's another much more likely scenario where you receive a windfall. And that, my friends, is inheritance. Right now, we're entering the greatest wealth transfer in United States history. And I could almost hear some of you guys saying one of two things right now. One, my folks are poor, so I'm shit out of luck beyond a stamp collection in a Buick that I don't want. And two, sweet, my folks are rich, therefore I'm gonna be rich and I'm gonna stay rich. It's just that simple, right? No, no, it never is. I read a study the other day that said the average inheritance somewhere between $100,000 and a million dollars, which to me is just a terrible study and tells me nothing about what the average American is going through. So let's dig a little bit deeper to see who's got the money, what the demographics are, and how it's gonna flow through the United States economy. Ever wonder what planet Earth's bank account would look like? Nerd alert! What about the biggest generational transfer of wealth that the United States has ever seen? All right, here's the breakdown. Eyes up top. The total net worth of the entire world is $510 trillion. Let's drill down a little bit further into the United States. We've got $140 trillion, which is up from only $38 trillion in 1989, adjusted for inflation. And that's triple due to soaring stocks and home prices. But getting to what we're gonna talk about today, you've got $84 trillion that's gonna transfer from boomers, the baby boomers, to millennials. 16 trillion of that is gonna happen in the next 10 years. Now at a high level, let's get back to that huge chasm between a $100,000 inheritance and your million dollar inheritance. Now that law of averages is because 1.5% of American households have $20 million or more. They're ultra high net worth individuals. They're gonna transfer 40 of the $84 trillion from now until 2045. So that makes up 42% of this huge generational wealth transfer. You know the old saying, the rich get richer. It's often said with kind of a negative connotation uh, that it's, uh, the American system is rigged and it's a foregone conclusion. At the same time, it'd be crazy not to acknowledge that some people start with a leg up, start a little bit further ahead in the race. But what the rich do that the poor don't do is that they spend, invest, and behave in a much more disciplined manner. They're generally interested and talk about financial and accounting tricks of the trade with like-minded individuals. Anecdotally, I paid off my student loans just months before they were about to balloon with adjustable rates. So I definitely understand that fear of a mountain of debt closing in. That's why I wanna help shed some light, which is why we're here. So first up, in order to follow the money, we need to know who to follow. So let's look at the demographics. So here's a full generational breakdown of the US population. Mostly, we're gonna focus on millennials and boomers, a little bit of Gen X, but I wanna lay it all out so you can see where everything falls in line. So up at the top, we have Gen Z. They're currently nine to 24. Ask me so good. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, thank you, baby, this is so cute, gang gang. Honestly, I'm glad they're not the focus today. I don't even know where to start with that. Then we get to the millennials. They make up about 22% of the population. They're between the ages of 27 and 42, and they hold only 4.6% of the nation's wealth. Moving on down to Gen X, they are between the ages of 43 to 58 years old. Again, not really the focus of today. And then we get to the boomers. They also make up about 22% of the population, and they are between the ages of 59 to 77 years old. And today, boomers control 54% of the nation's wealth compared to millennials' modest 4.6%. Interestingly enough, when boomers were the same age as millennials, they controlled 21% of the nation's wealth. That's five times that of millennials. Talk about a leg up. And to throw it all the way back, we've got the silent generation or the great generation. They gave birth to the baby boomers after fighting the world wars, God bless them. Uh, and now they're mostly just fading out. But again, today's focus is on the greatest transfer of wealth in US history. That's from the baby boomers to the millennials. So let's break down their assets and liabilities and see how they're spending and saving. So buckle up millennials, this one's really gonna hurt. Eyes up top. Number one, we have real estate with millennials at 12.5% and baby boomers at 43.2%. Then we've got stocks and bonds with millennials at 2.5% and baby boomers at 54.6%. Then we've got pensions and 401ks with millennials at 8.8% and boomers at 49.6%. Alternative investments, 8.8 and 50.3% respectively. This one's peculiar. This one's a little interesting to me. Business ownership. We've got 8.3% for the millennials and 46.4% for the boomers. So if you're like me, at this point, you might be thinking, you know, well, hey, millennials are online every day, all day, posting about that entrepreneurial grind set mindset and I'm my own boss, so surely they'd be winning this category, right? Wrong. Turns out it's way more noise than signal. Not only are millennials growing their parents' friends' businesses with little to no equity as employees, 
but they're also being stripped of the future promise of a cushy retirement like we just covered in pensions and 401k. Huh. So how's that for an Instagram reality check? Cool, so that's assets. Now let's take a look at liabilities or debt. Eyes back up top. Number one, we've got real estate. Millennials and baby boomers show a tie here at 27% whereas you have Gen X at 41.5%. Okay, okay, dead even, not bad. Finally, somewhat of a point for millennials. And this checks out too, because you've got Gen X that's uh, further along in their child rearing years, bigger mortgages, bigger houses. Uh, they're also dominating the highest paying jobs as baby boomers slide into retirement. And as the world and financial markets debate whether we're gonna stick this soft landing, hit a recession, or just go off to the moon at this point, this is the one I worry about the most. And the reason is because it signals a super scary behavioral divergence between boomers and millennials. But it's also where millennials have the biggest agency and opportunity to improve. And it's no surprise that it's the most intertwined with culture. Consumer credit. We're talking about student loans, auto loans, credit cards. Millennials have 40.5% of this. Boomers only 22.3%. So quick recap. The boomers own more assets, have far less debt, so naturally their net worths are way higher. Got it? Good. But I wanna double click on the millennial behavior these numbers point to, and also the cultural differences between millennials and the boomers. Knowledge is power. Millennials are clearly living beyond their means and trying to keep up with the Joneses in this fake Instagram, you know, best life culture. Us millennials, we were sold this college dream, uh, read debt by our boomer parents, uh, who raised the cost of tuition by 1200 fucking percent uh, compared to what was practically a birthright when they were coming up through college. And there's a lot of people on Instagram out there talking about how college is a sham. I'll go into that in another video, uh, but I'm all for education and the numbers bear that out. For example, look at this chart on the Federal Reserve website that shows a massive correlation between education and wealth, but also what perverse incentives are in place that allow these universities to accumulate inordinate endowment funds while at the same time getting hundreds of millions, sometimes billions in federal funding every year. Let's look at Harvard, for example. And not to throw a pity party for millennials, but they lived through the 2008 great financial crisis, the pandemic, uh, and then also an era where wages stayed stagnant at $7.25 from 2009. Not to mention this era is characterized by QE and ZERP, which is quantitative easing and zero interest rate policy, which had a lot of negative knock-on effects to the average millennial trying to buy a house and build financial wealth in this time. But companies like Blackstone and Open Door with SoftBank Funny Money running around buying not your thousand unit complex, but the $250,000 two bed, two bath down the street from you, uh, sending open house lines 100 deep and prices just rocketing, making it almost impossible for millennials to achieve home ownership. If you look at it on an apples to apples basis, boomers compared to millennials at the same time in their life, uh, millennials are 5X poorer and their lifespans are shrinking. So it kind of makes you think, you know, who's driving these governmental and corporate policies? <gasps> Boomers. It's safe to say it's been a rougher road for the millennials compared to their fun-loving hippie parents. Let's get back to that wealth windfall and how to preserve it. It's said in life that there's nothing more certain than death and taxes. And ain't that the truth. Turns out it's a major player in wealth preservation as well. You know the drill, eyes up top. Let's look at estate tax versus inheritance tax. Estate tax, AKA the death tax, is charged by the government on the deceased total assets at time of death. Inheritance tax is charged by the government to the beneficiary for receiving the deceased assets. You know, think succession. Fuck off! So in today's example, the boomer gets charged the estate tax upon death, and then the government puts its hand out again and charges the millennial for receiving those assets. You know, flowers in a card would have been just fine, Uncle Sam, you greedy prick. Estate taxes have federal and state tax implications and range from 18 to 40% above the 13 million, roughly, exemption. And only 13 states charge this. A couple side notes on estate taxes. There's an unlimited marital deduction between spouses for a full transfer, whether you're alive or dead, and it helps you avoid federal or gift tax. And in the span of 23 years, that $13 million exemption has jumped from 625,000 all the way up to 13 million. So that's more of a political flex than it is uh, an inflation adjustment. But yeah, your vote fucking matters. Got it? Good. Earth to millennials. If you're expecting a huge windfall above that $13 million exemption, this is a major opportunity that plays to your digital nomad tendencies. Just by moving to your choice of 44 locations in any of these United States, 
you can save a ton of cash and preserve your family's wealth. But now you can see that making money is one thing and keeping it is an entirely different skill set. And what I've noticed helping some of the world's richest and most financially savvy families is that the giving starts far before death. They understand how the game of money works and they play it very well. And taxes are sometimes thought of as enemy number one. They come in all different shapes and sizes. They're associated with federal, state, and city levels and different life events. Uh, one that we really need to talk about that you have power and agency over is income tax. There's actually eight states in the U.S. where you don't have to pay any income tax. Inflation is another enemy, especially considered that the U.S. printed 25% of its entire money supply in the last few years. That's why the price of eggs, gas, and housing has skyrocketed over the last couple of years, uh, reducing your purchase power. And then there's interest, and interest is a sneaky, cold-hearted bitch if you don't understand it. It's attached to your credit cards, your student loans, auto loans, and home loans. And healthcare costs are another deadly force that could come by surprise and just wreck somebody's net worth. So even if you're a solopreneur or an independent contractor and you pay for your own benefits, you must be insured. At the very least, get an HSA, which is a health savings account. This enables pre-tax dollar contributions and you could pay from that for medical expenses. And better yet, you should be taking preventative measures like eating right and exercising. And regardless of whether you stand to inherit money or not, there's one surefire way to preserve wealth and hey, let's not rule out building it as well. And that's live within your means. Folks, this is it, this is the headline. I stop and think about how millennials and Gen Z spent their stimmy money during the pandemic. It was travel, experiences, peak luxury goods like Louis Vuitton and Rolexes. And what does all that have in common? It's the flex, it's tied to that Instagram culture. Your photos have to be lit, right? Living your best life every day and all that copycat bullshit. Oh, and by the way, Jay-Z said last night was a movie, so you don't have to. Millennials are getting married later, not having as many kids, and many are unable to buy housing. It's easy to see that there's definitely emotional underpinnings affecting how you survive these mortal enemies of wealth preservation. And it's fascinating to consider the difference between the boomers who have basically all the wealth today compared to the millennials and Gen Z counterparts who stand to hit this quasi lottery of the greatest wealth transfer in the United States history. Your parents were super suspicious of Big Brother. They don't want to participate and be tracked by social media. They just want to make their money, kind of go about their way and be quiet about it. Add to that, there was no public square like Instagram to show off. And hippie culture was just about free love, fighting the man and ending wars like Vietnam. And this new generation was introduced to financial markets and instruments during the GameStop fiasco, where stocks only go up. And the first time you walk into a casino, what do you do? Well, you gamble. Or in this instance, you day traded meme stocks, NFTs, shit coins with reckless abandon having no appreciation for financial ramifications such as transaction costs or taxes. And it's only natural. But where the boomers were different was they bought and they fucking held. And that compound interest ballooned at a time when wages did rise, debt to GDP wasn't underwater, housing was cheap, plentiful, and you could make it on one income. That's how boomers got so rich. And sure, they bought some Rolexes too, but millennials who stand to inherit a bunch of cash would do really well to understand and appreciate the concept of spend the interest, not the principal. Create a budget, build your nut, let it grow, and don't overspend on luxury goods trying to impress other people. And that includes watches, cars, or even vintage guitars. Think to yourself, is this an asset that I can reasonably expect to go up in value over time, or is this just conspicuous consumption for vanity's sake? Got it? Good. I mean, you really don't wanna be on the wrong side of first gen makes it, second gen builds it, third gen loses it, right? It's a clear succession tale as old as time. Fuck it. Since we like entrepreneurship and independence on the Nick Palin Show, here's a few interesting stats about business owners. 68% of the world's wealthiest people are self-made, meaning they built it. Now in terms of the wealth transfer, 70% of families that inherit their wealth will lose it by the second generation. And by the third generation, 90% will wind up with less than what they started with. Essentially, they failed to build or they failed to preserve because they didn't have that first-hand experience to develop that muscle memory. And check this one out. For those inheriting businesses, only 13% survived the third generation and 3% survived the fourth generation. I suspect this is why most billionaires give away their money via the giving pledge, a la Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. They want their kids to develop that financial survival muscle because they understand the benefits firsthand. Absent that, you're kind of releasing a zoo animal into the wild after 18 years of captivity where it's easily gonna get picked off. So make your ancestors proud and start building these financial tactics and mindsets into your strategy for navigating the greatest wealth transfer 
in United States history. Oh, and in case you didn't notice, I actually rebranded last week and I'm giving away free stickers. So just email your address to nickpalanshow at gmail.com and I'll get them right out. It's actually a nod to my upbringing in the Northeast. Uh, it's in the style of those ACK or CC for Nantucket and Cape Cod stickers that you see on cars all the time. I hope you guys enjoy it. As always, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next week.